to this week's Movie Math, giving you an in-depth analysis of the box office for the weekend of December 9th, as audiences continue to be unimpressed. After not bothering to release any movies on a national scale the previous weekend, Hollywood punted rather than swung for the fences with New Year's Eve and The Sitter. Offended, audiences stayed home, resulting in debuts that were even lower than their low projections and a box office that is the lowest since 2008. Unbelievably, New Year's Eve was able to top the box office with $13.7 million, a mere shadow of Valentine's Day's debut last year. However, to be fair, Valentine's Day actually came out for its holiday, while New Year's Eve is still three weeks away. And considering that there are no wide releases planned for December 30th, perhaps a fatal scheduling mistake was made. But while Warner Brothers can at least claim to have learned a lesson, what scapegoat can 20th Century Fox point to for The Sitter? The Jonah Hill star debuted in the number two spot with just $10 million, and its DOA status seemed imminent from the beginning. A much slimmer Jonah Hill has been doing the publicity rounds these days, not to mention a fun online ad with Sam Worthington for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, making The Sitter seem like it was made ages ago. Then there's the fact that the picks seem to have no clear audience in mind. Young males aren't too eager to watch a bunch of kids on screen, yet the comedy is way too raunchy for families. I mean, it's not like Kindergarten Cop, The Pacifier, or The Spy Next Door featured their action stars shooting co-stars in the head or delivering major beatdowns. Yes, it's not been a good year for Jonah Hill, with the sitter flopping and his new animated TV show Alan Gregory on the verge of cancellation. Then again, word is he might just get a Best Supporting Actor nod for Moneyball, so it could be all good. Hollywood, the most expensive and glittery game of shoots and ladders ever. As for the rest of the box office, Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1 fell another 52% in its fourth weekend. While that still makes for a very impressive domestic total of $259 million so far, it now seems unlikely that this installment will be able to match New Moon's worldwide total, or even eclipses. Looks like Summit Entertainment has planned this franchise out perfectly, as it looks to wrap up just as audience interest expires. Meanwhile, The Muppets has not held up well and is unlikely to top 100 million stateside, news that certainly won't help it when it rolls out overseas. Perhaps a same-day worldwide release would have been a smarter move after all. Another movie that also probably won't reach 100 million is Jack and Jill, making it Sandler's first mainstream comedy not to do so since Little Nicky. Uh-oh. Arthur Christmas, though, is still holding on by its fingernails, boasting just a 10% drop, but not from a very high height. Hugo is also staying relatively afloat, dropping just 19% thanks to strong awards buzz. In fact, as I recently posted on Facebook, Hugo has the best 3D in a movie I've ever seen. In the limited release market, both Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy, and Young Adult made impressive bows. While we need to talk about Kevin opened in just one theater to qualify for the 2012 awards season. The movie might not be on the mainstream radar, but it's picking up serious traction with all the right people. However, My Week with Marilyn, Shame, and A Dangerous Method all dropped, a bad sign for movies still playing in just a handful of theaters. Only The Artist posted a gain as it added 10 theaters for a total of 16. As for this coming weekend, the box office is set to explode as both Sherlock Holmes 2 and Alvin and the Chipmunks 3 hit theaters. Both are on track to post impressive and much-needed numbers, but the real story of the upcoming weekend might well be Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. The fourth installment is set to open on 400 IMAX theaters before going wide on December 21st, with a few of those IMAX theaters also playing a six-minute preview of The Dark Knight Rises. We'll have to see what kind of impact that will have on MI4's box office numbers, and if maybe the movie doesn't need much help after all. And that's the weekend box office roundup. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies, as well check out my brand new comic book news channel, Think About the Ink.